Hi, welcome back to What's Cooking. I'm your host, Pearl Nanduri, and today on episode four, we're at the Willamette Valley Vineyard. This gorgeous place has breathtaking views, awesome wines, and as well as delicious food. So let's get back in the kitchen and see what's cooking at the Willamette Valley Vineyard. Well, I'm in the kitchen with the, here uh, with Eric Nelson, and he's been so welcoming, and we've just been waiting to start with these delicious dishes. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about the winery, the vineyard, and when it was when was it started, and who started it, and just a little bit of history about the vineyard. Sure, actually, um, it, it goes back as far as 1961, where this uh, gentleman by the name of uh, Richard Sommer, um, he needed a lawyer to get th through all the legal aspects of opening up a winery. In fact, it was the first one winery post-prohibition. Um, and that attorney that he hired was actually Jim Bernot's father. And Jim oh, wow. Bernot is the, uh, the founder and president of this company. So right. it's kind of fortuitous that his father was the, uh, the, the attorney for the first winemaker in oh, Oregon wow. after prohibition. Oh, wow. And I mean, I have to admit, this place is so beautiful. It's I know amazing. that you've uh, remodeled. Right. Yeah, about a year and a half ago, we underwent this giant remodel, and now this is kind of the fun, some of the fun stuff that we get to do. Yeah, I can. I seriously can be here all day, sipping a glass of wine <laughs> and eating my coffees, which we're going to be showing you. So we got our gloves on. So let's 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 start preparing. What is the first dish that we're going to be doing? Uh, um, well, I'm going to start off with something that's basically it's good on just about everything. It's it's a pickled onion, and it's a good garnish. It looks pretty, and it tastes wonderful, and it kind of balances out a lot of different foods. Um, so I'm going to start off with this red onion. Well, actually, I'm going to start off with uh, this pot, throw in some water. We have some uh, white wine vinegar, uh, some sugar, salt, some peppercorns, and a bay leaf. And we're just going to put this on a stove to heat up and kind of dissolve, uh, dissolve some of the sugar and the salt. Uh, so what we're going to do is just uh, finish up slicing these onions. Need to teach me that trick because you now there I am slowly cutting the onions. And, <laughs> lots uh, of practice. Yes. Lots of practice. <laughs> Any tricks on uh, what helps you? Do you you have sensitive eyes and you don't want that running? You know, because it happens to some of us. Right? Um, that onions. happens usually typically because of a dull knife. If you have a really really sharp knife and then it won't uh, burst all the onion juices and it flies up in your mouth oh. and your nose and your okay, eyes. Okay, that's good stuff. to know because my husband there whenever he's watering and you know uh, it's a good way to show how when he's crying this is what he's gonna look like but you know uh, so what I want you to do actually is if you can start putting these onions into this okay, jar great. we're just gonna pack that jar as tight are we, as we are you can doing all of these all or? of them yep oh, okay. pack it as tight as you possibly can okay and this will be our preserving jar okay I'm making a little mess but that's, that's okay, okay right okay and so another funny story about when uh, this uh, place came to fruition is uh, Jim Bruno when he was a child he actually Try to make wine with his brother. I think he was about 12 years old, uh -huh. and um, I think he tried to use Concord grape juice. Oh well, wow. <laughs> probably one of the worst uh, uh, wines, the wines that he's ever made. I'm guessing. So practice makes perfect. Is that what he's it is? He's made a is couple cents. He actually went to UC Davis and took some winemaking classes there. Went to France, took some classes there, and he got encouraged to come to Oregon back in 1983 when he was living in California. Uh, to come and start a vineyard, and that's what he did. And this is the best place to have a vineyard, right? I've never it's, seen a place uh, this beautiful. And Oregon, I mean, I'm from Los Angeles, uh -huh. so um, you know when we when we thought about vineyards, we thought about Napa Valley, but right. Oregon takes it to a different level. Right, it right. Is beautiful. Well, if you think about it, Oregon too is on the same parallel as uh, Burgundy, France. So right. It has some of the same same uh, climates. Right. Uh, yes, I, I agree with that. But is that good? Sure. Why not? Okay. <laughs> Let me go get the liquid, and we'll pour that right in. I'll be okay, right back. Okay. Awesome. You know, we as Indians, we eat a lot of pickles, mm -hmm. as you would know. Yeah, so, um, I'd love to see how you're putting a little twist to it and how you're doing that. Because usually it's just like, you know, vinegar, garlic, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But and then, so you just take this uh, pickling liquid, and just pour it right in until it's uh, up to the top. So how long does it have to sit there to become into a pickle? Well, I just let it sit out for a couple hours, fill it up oh, all the way to the top, a couple okay. hours, and then throw it in the fridge, and it'll last for you know a couple, I mean, a few months. I mean, 
Okay, uh, so I'm taking this home today, right? Sure, okay. absolutely. <laughs> okay, absolutely. cool. All right. So we're going to set this off to the side and make uh, the next project for okay, this dish. Okay, awesome. Okay. And I have to say, um, there's no better way of cooking than with a glass of wine. Honestly. We need to get glasses of wine. We need to get we? glasses of wine, yes. <laughs> we'll I do agree. that during the next break. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so next we're going to make the lamb kofta. And we're going to start out by uh, uh, grating an onion. I do not like to grate onions. This, this is definitely going to probably make me die. Yes, and it's a little tough too. I don't know. It just. Right. It's good that you have the gloves on because I'm always kind of like cutting myself. And, right, right. Uh, Let's take this guy. Can you help with that? I got it. Alright, you see us crying. <laughs> it's all his fault, okay? Alright, get that done and we're gonna grate the ginger. Smash the garlic and we'll be good to just add. You know, I keep a lot of uh, garlic and ginger paste in my fridge. Oh, yeah. I get that at the Indian store yeah, and stuff like that. But um, does it, do, you, do you agree though when you're using it fresh, it is a little bit different? Fresh is much better. Much better. Definitely go fresh if you can. So chopped up those garlics and okay. basically we can add the rest of the stuff. Alright, can I help you with that? Yeah, absolutely. Right. We have a little bit of chili powder. Alright. We got so there. Is that the salt? Some salt. Salt. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to take this. Go ahead and add the rest okay. of that. Okay. Pepper. There's some uh, uh, is garam masala. Garam masala. Yeah. Alright. And black Just a pepper. a mixture of spices. You bet. Black pepper. And what is this exactly? Some ground up almonds. Toasted oh, okay. almonds. Okay, almonds. And then I'm going to take this egg. No, it's actually, it's, uh, it's breadcrumbs. Oh, it's kind of help bind it a little bit. Oh, wow. Okay, awesome. So basically, kofta, it means, uh, it's basically an Indian-style meatball mm -hmm. or, or uh, kind of meatloaf. Right. Um, so we're going to whisk this egg up. And I have tried to cook this. It has been here before, and they're delicious. All right, we'll add that right in there. Okay. And finally, I'm going to give you the messiest job. Yes. <laughs> and this is the actually a mixture job. between Anderson Ranch Lamb, okay. Uh, down in Brownsville, they come out of and Rudio Creek Ranch beef. Um, oh, wow. So go ahead, dig okay. in. Okay, all right. Just mix that up. I well, get to do we'll the make dirty job. Huh? And good to go. So here. So does this have to sit out, or is this ready to go right away? It's ready to go. I mean, as soon as we get this all uh, combined, we'll put that into the wood fire oven back here, and we'll get that cooking. Okay. And then we'll make the sauce for the dish. Okay, well, while I'm doing this, uh, we're also going to get a glass of wine in here, <laughs> and uh, we'll be back. Okay, here we are. Um, he brought us some great wines because, you know, it's so much more fun when you're drinking and cooking together. So he's going to tell us a little bit about these, uh, these red wines that we're having. Um, this uh, particular red wine, it's uh, from our Elton Vineyard. It's our Elton Pinot Noir. And um, Dick and Betty O'Brien own this, uh, this vineyard. They actually uh, planted this back in 1983. The same year Jim plant, planted uh, this vineyard. Um, he acquired it from uh, Betty's uh, uh, father, okay. um, who actually had, uh, it was a black cap patch. Um, all the neighbors, kind of funny, because uh, all the neighbors were wondering why, back in the day, that there's these big semis coming back to his farm right. and then leaving. Well, they couldn't say why, because they had a clause with this company saying so they wouldn't tell where all these black caps were going. And then finally, when uh, that whole thing was over with, they were able to tell him that it was uh, one of the 23 secret ingredients in Dr. Pepper. Oh, was wow. black caps from this oh. vineyard. So back in 1983, they switched it over uh, to uh, planting Pinot Noir and started growing those vines. That's great. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take a sip of this uh, while he's uh, cooking away. And, uh... and so we're just going to simply make up some balls here. And uh, we'll tasty. put them back into the wood fire oven back there. Okay, so they just, no frying, right? Just baking. Just baking it, yep. So you know that um, it's delicious food and it's not fried, so it's pretty healthy. <laughs> All right, there we go. Throw a few of those in. And come back here to this oven. Watch your step there. I'm gonna throw another log on here. So this is a wood fire gas assist oven that we use uh, 
whenever we're cooking out here, it's basically anything you can do in an oven, you can do in this. You just gotta be careful because it's about 900 degrees in there. Did rather you than, serve a lot of pizzas here too? Did I get to um, see We that? have done some flatbreads here in the past. When we first started out, we cooked everything from our menu out front and we were hand tossing some flatbreads. Okay, um, wonderful. And we're just kind of transitioning to the back kitchen and I think we'll probably come back out here sometime yes. or another. And I know that, um, I know I was on your website and I saw that you're doing Dinners, oh, yeah. dinners. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So what we have here is a four-course food and wine pairing experience led by one of our winery ambassadors and uh, and the chef. Okay. So what happens is on Saturdays and Sundays it's at four o'clock okay. and everybody sits around this bar right here and I'm right here cooking the food. The winery ambassador is right here uh, pouring, the, pouring the wine and talking about the stories of this place. And then on Fridays, we actually do it at 6.30 at night to kind of give people a little bit later time to get here rather than doing the oh, 4 o'clock okay. period. Which is great, yeah, because I mean, it is a Friday, everyone's kind of right, getting right. all the work. And, and it's to... been really popular. We've had 30 to 50 people here every Friday night, and everyone sits out here and wow. we just uh, tell the stories, serve food, and wine, and have a great time. Well, I'm definitely coming here with my husband. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I was asking you, I don't think you have any time. Or about Actually, we do. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, nothing uh, as far as a dinner goes. Okay. We are hosting. It's what we call Pinot and chocolate. Okay. Uh, people love Pinot. People love chocolate. So we oh, host God. a celebration up here um, on Saturday and Sunday. It's from 11 until 6, and we have a bunch of different chocolate vendors here, and we're pairing up our wine with their chocolates. And oh God! Nothing like really chocolate fun. and wine, right? Yeah. After all that, and I'm always ready to have some of that. So right. it's great. Okay, well, let's get back and see what else he has prepared. For. Um, so next, uh, we're going to make the sauce for this dish, and it's a cucumber uh, rayeta. Um, basically, it's a, it's a cucumber yogurt sauce. And so we're going to start off with uh, some Greek yogurt. And are you using like non-fat Greek or just uh, regular Greek? Uh, it's just regular Greek yogurt. Okay. And then, just uh, onions. Some uh, diced, seeded, and peeled Cucumbers, have a little pepper, um, some cumin, a little salt, and sumac. What is sumac exactly for people that don't know? Sumac is a berry, it, it kind of grows around Africa, even North America, but it's a berry of a bush and a tree. It's re really red in color. Okay, so what, what does it do to the flavor when you add that? It adds a really tangy uh, uh, citrus or lemon okay. flavor to it. So we got uh, some agave in there too. And my favorite And I'm gonna finish with cilantro. I add cilantro to everything. I could <laughs> bathe in cilantro. Yeah, I love this just, stuff I so love much. It. I know there are a lot of people that don't like that flavor, but God, I can, I, I double add it to everything. There's something so. out there that some people have, and it's a taste receptor in their mouth that uh -huh. actually makes cilantro taste like soap. And it's, I mean, it's a legitimate oh, really? thing. You look it up online and oh, people wow. really dislike it and it makes it taste like soap. Just the chemicals in their mouth? Something or? happens oh, in wow. there and they just, they, they just okay, despise so the that stuff. that describes, that kind of tells me why. Because I'm like, well, you could not love cilantro. However, we have a gal who works here uh -huh. and she is like that. She, she can't stand cilantro, but yet she will eat this lamb meatball with this cucumber raita. Uh -huh. and, like, and not like, even and taste it. And loves it. And loves it. So. Yeah, because it's not well, probably not overpowering. And right. You can't tell well, I don't know. It's it definitely got to <laughs> yeah, be somewhat well, overpowering. Right. Okay. So we're gonna take that. Let me grab the spatula here. If you just want to give that a mix, I'm gonna go check on the lamb back there. Okay, sure. Oh God, that looks so good. See, I mean, um, I'm, you know, everyone out there that is looking for just a simple, quick recipe. Uh, um, you know, and I know it has a lot of protein Greek yogurt as well and uh, see how healthy it is and you can just whip this up in five minutes and it's ready to go. So, so it is, it's the Greek yogurt that gives it that creaminess. That's what I was wondering when I ordered. Um, kind of, it's very creamy. So what I'm going to do here to kind of finish this dish off is we have a little bit of flatbread. We're gonna brush it with some olive oil, flour to sell, a little fresh cracked pepper, and a little sumac to finish that off. And I'm gonna throw that right in the wood fire oven to crisp that up, and then we'll be making our dish. Okay, awesome. Wow, this is very simple and uh, tasty. I love this stuff. Yeah, me too. Okay. So we're gonna plate it from the start. 
start out with, it takes some arugula, it's nice and uh, peppery, add in some of our coriander vinaigrette, give that a stir around, and place that right in the middle of our dish. Okay, so we'll grab that this was probably in there for about 60 seconds. Wow. So yeah, it, it pulls back. <laughs> very, it gets dosed very quickly. But I, I love uh, my pita, a little um, crispy. Mm -hmm. That's all. So we got some pita there. So tell me a little bit about your background. Did you, um, did you go to college for this or did you take uh, courses? Yeah, I mean, I've been cooking for about 20 years now. Um, started when I was just a teenager. Started off washing dishes and worked your way up the line, and it became something I, you know, had a passion for and I was really pretty good at. And so, you know, I was going to college. Well, my definitely mom said, good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I agree. And uh, right. my mom just said, figure out what you want to do, and uh, cooking was the thing. So I went to culinary school in Colorado, and it was a three-year program where every six months you rotated to a different uh, restaurant in their resort. Okay. So it wasn't half bad that I got to see pass at the same time. Oh wow, right. that's At awesome. 19 years old, so it wasn't too bad. That's great. So anyway, do you want to try this? Yes, so I'm going to go sit down, have my glass of wine, have, try some of that food, and uh, get back in the kitchen after we try it. Hey, actually, you know what? Um, these right here, these pickled onions, through the magic of TV, they turn into these, just like that. So we're going to put just a little bit of pickled onion right in the middle there, and it looks pretty. Oh, and that it does. A nice little balance of flavor It does, there and it, it gives it a little kick, those onions. So All right, enjoy. I'm going to sit down and eat that. All right, thank you so much. Okay, now I'm digging into some um, delicious lamb koftas that we just prepared in the kitchen. And uh, I, you know, I've tried these before, and this is the reason I'm here is because the food in here is so good. Um, I definitely, definitely recommend everyone to come in and try this dish. Uh, it has flavor, it's not overpowering. And uh, this raita just adds a lot of creaminess and uh, um, great taste to the dish. So. It's perfect every time. I just definitely wouldn't share this dish with anyone because it is so yummy, so. Not even my husband. <laughs> All right, that'll be even more fun. Uh, you could just uh, guide me, I guess. Okay. And, um, let me do the dirty work, I guess. Got it. Okay, what are we doing here? Um, so our next dish, uh, we're gonna make uh, butternut squash and sage uh, duck confit raviolis, and that's this dish right here with all these uh, ingredients. But in order to do that, we have to make duck confit, and so over here we have the ingredients to do that. And so we're gonna take our bowl, and I'm gonna let you get messy this yes, time. Um, so go ahead and add the salt. <laughs> okay. That's just some kosher salt. Okay. We have brown sugar. Brown sugar. Some white sugar. Some white sugar. We like our sugars. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take those herbs and actually just peel all the leaves off of them and we'll okay. give them a quick chop. Oh. No, just put chop. them right in. Okay. Put them right okay. In. okay. This is just gonna be uh, okay. kind of a cure of brine. And these two as well? Yep. Okay. So we have some sage leaves. Uh, there's some fresh thyme. Am I doing this wrong? Is there a way of doing there's this? There's not a wrong way. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm like. Okay. All right. Yeah, some rosemary some there. Absolutely. I love rosemary. It smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Got that in there. So that's good. I'm going to squeeze this orange in there. Okay, yes, please. And then go ahead and put the rest of those spices in. And what you have here, okay. uh, there's some lavender, uh, cloves, cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, some ground ginger, and ground garlic powder. Okay, okay so add. I have a question about these. Well, can okay. I just kind of... Go ahead and put okay. that in. Um, do you, so do you try this in the back? I mean, do you? I mean, are you trying these recipes in the back? There's a ton I mean, of recipe testing going on okay. back there. Just tons of it. Uh, whenever I make menus, I like to take his wines and uh, kind of use those as ingredients in the dish too. Right. So and try and make make that perfect pairing. 
Um, from that, I just kind of take my favorite foods and things that I've done in the past. Like right. I said, I was cooking for 20 years, so right. a lot of different different things. Because you know, when um, I think about wine uh, and you know adding it, I usually only think about Italian food. I guess you can use wine for a lot more other different cuisines. Oh, well. any cuisine is loaded with wine. Okay, awesome. I'm going to take this right here. We have some of our Pinot Noir. We're going to put that right in there. Go ahead and mix okay. it up. Okay. Um, with your hands. Get oh, okay. Wow. Well, okay. All right. That's the reason I have glass. But yep. Okay. Great. Okay, so Good now there. we're going to take our duck breasts, or I'm sorry, duck okay. legs. <laughs> so we're, we're uh, so kind of like marinating this, right? This is, it's basically it's it's like a, a salt cure and it's going to turn into this brine, this lovely flavorful brine with all the spices mm. in there. And then what you want to do with that is you want to put it into a container and put another container on top okay. so it smashes it. And let me tell you why in just a minute. So you're going to put both of those right into here. Smell is so delicious. So both really of these potent, just absolutely. kind of uh, yep. in here, right in there. Okay. And pour the rest of that right. liquid right on top of them. Mm. And what this is going to do, all the salt in there is going to bring of out it. all of the liquids from the meat from those duck legs. Okay. And it's going to actually infuse it with all the flavors that you put into it. And you want to put a container on top of it and smash it down and put something. You can either fill this up with water or put a couple bottles of wine in oh, there. Okay. You don't want to waste <laughs> it wine. Comes in in handy. Water. <laughs> um, to smash it down so that way all that liquid is going to create this brine and it's going to cure the meats. And you want to leave it in there for about 36 hours. 36 hours. Wow. Okay. After, so, this is um, very labor intensive with the labor of love for sure. After that 36 hours, you'll take it out. And then what we do um, is we actually started out with duck fat. And um, it's actually turned into kind of duck bacon fat. Okay. Because we make our own bacon here too. Oh, wow. And sometimes we'll take a whole pork belly and we'll put it in the duck fat and, and confit it and okay. cook it overnight. So it's become duck bacon fat. So okay, since we're doing this 36 yeah. hours ahead, I yes. mean, do you have a, do you, I mean, do you have an idea of how much you're gonna need or you know how many customers order that? Well, the thing with this is once it's done and cooked, we shred it and it. Oh, okay. into this form and that's what goes okay. into uh, uh, the ravioli dish. So, so how, we just how make a whole bunch of it. Okay, how, how, how many days can you keep that and without it to... Oh, know? well the thing about uh, confit and it's, it's the art of preservation. This, was, this process was actually made um, hundreds of years ago because okay. when they didn't have refrigeration they had to cure things ah, and okay. sugar and salt so it lasts without refrigeration. Okay, so thank even you for though making that clear. Okay. Even though it's such an old age type of a process, it's become very, very, very yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. And so what we would do with this, if this had cured for 36 hours, we would rinse them off, throw them right in our duck fat right there, and it would just bake oh. in the oven at about 200 degrees overnight. Day when we come in, it's basically falling off the bone, oh. just luxurious, unctuous. I just I yeah, love I this stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love the smell of the kitchen when I come in at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. This is cooking. It's just I that, love it. That, so you never get you never get sick of the smell. <laughs> oh, anything, absolutely you know? not. Because there are a lot of people like, oh, okay, I can't eat this anymore because I've been cooking with it, but you're I never get tired of it. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's the process of making duck home cake. And then after that, our dish that we're making, this butternut squash ravioli, I'm going to clear some of this stuff out of the way. And I'm just going to take these uh, butternut squash and sage ravioli, put them in our water back here. And that will take a few minutes to warm up. Okay. Those get ready. So we're giving it just a few minutes. Uh, okay, yeah, no worries. It's just, um, there's just so much that goes into preparations and you've got all these, God, how do you keep track of all? <laughs> All of this, because to me... There, there's about 10 items on the menu. There's yeah. probably well over 100, 150 ingredients. Wow. I mean, just that lamb pasta dish that we just yeah. had. I mean, there must have been about 30 different things in there. It's so impressive. Because, I mean, I love to cook it so we kind of I've been saying that for a while. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, taking my time. I think my time, I mean, I hope you hear, you know, you have to serve your customer. Oh, yeah, it's you know, fast you know, <laughs> So it's a, it's a lot of repetition that yeah. I guess you get kind of get used to. And you have a lot of people in the back helping you as well? But yeah, there's a couple people back there. We have a full-time uh, chef, uh, Chris Ramis, and we have Melissa Stamper as a part-time in Charlie Say. Uh, so I have some, a great support staff. There's some great dishwashers back there. They come in and get them. You know, they oh, they pick up the knives them. and they chop them and stuff up for us okay, too. Okay, that's great. Um, to finish up this dish here, let me grab a couple. Um, actually, it's this right here. This is uh, this is what I call it. it's brown butter. Okay. And basically, it's you know a lot of times they'll just take butter and you cook it until it starts to uh, caramelize or start to turn toasty brown, kind of get that nutty flavor to it. Um, I actually take heavy whipping cream and butter and reduce it down so you have more of the milk solids. And so we're gonna put that right in there. Take 
kind of, you're caramelizing the butter. Wow, I've never really seen that. Got some onions. Ooh. And we'll throw in our duck confit. Okay. We'll cook that down just well, a little bit. Need butter, you need Are those mushrooms that you added? Yeah, okay. mushrooms, portobello mushrooms. We'll just let that cook, and once those uh, are all ready to go, we'll toss it together and kind of finish up the dish. So, I mean, this, the meat's already pretty much cooked. Oh, right? yeah, it's, yeah, it's so you're just cooked kind of all the way. It together cooking and, the onions down, um, kind of blending the And it's funny because it's really uh, picking up the flavor that quickly, right? Oh, We're yeah, not absolutely. cooking it for too long. Right. The raviolis are done. Gonna toss those in. Give it a good toss. We're ready to plate. Pine nuts, <laughs> Parmesan cheese, yes, please. and so, parsley. Um, tell us a little bit about your customers. Like, um, do you see customers from all over? Oh, people come from around the world. I mean, it's amazing. It's really neat to see this place fill up. On the weekends, I mean, there's not a seat that's empty in here. Yes, I've Especially been here. In too. the summertime, yeah. it's amazing. We have some of the best views out there. Um, some of the neatest offerings. We do banquets for up to 300 people. We must have about 15 different banquet spaces here. Uh, there's guest suites down on the other end, so people can actually stay overnight too. Oh wow, I yeah. didn't know that. So we need to, my husband and I need to come try that. So, I mean, I see a lot of different buildings. I mean, what are they exactly? Because I know um, I drive up and I know this is the main tasting room as well as uh, the kitchen, but what else are we, what other buildings are we seeing? Um, well, it actually started out over on that building. It was the first one here. Um, that and actually uh, Jim's house, he used to live at the top okay. of the hill. Did you see that house up there No, right I haven't now? seen that yet. Well, it started house. out as a single white trailer for the first uh, 10 years of his life here. Okay. And then for the next 20 years, he upgraded to a double white trailer. Oh, wow. And it, was, it wasn't until the year I started, about three years ago, uh -huh. that the board of directors allowed him to build a house. Wow. And the funny thing about that was, is when they went to go take that house down, uh -huh. they started pulling it and it just disintegrated. I mean, you could really tell that he didn't really care about like, his living yeah. conditions. This yeah. was his baby. This was his focus. So he just kind of so, focused, put all his money into this this business here. Right. I mean, the, he's basically turned this into a, a tasting room with higher learning. All we really want to try and do is try and teach people how to enjoy these wines with food. So you can take his wines home and enjoy them with your friends and family. And that's, that's what I love about this place. Because you go to a lot of vineyards, um, you know, you get great wine and you get a little bit of snacks here and there. But uh, this is actually a sit-down restaurant. You can have a great meal with your wine, and that's really important. Absolutely, and I'll come out and talk to you and tell you why it pairs up well with it. Exactly. It's a really and neat experience. A lot of knowledge in his wines as well as food. It's wonderful. All right, we're going to sit down and uh, try this uh, awesome ravioli. We're trying the um, duck ravioli, which we just prepped in the back, uh, and uh, my mouth is already watering. So let's uh, take a bite of this and see how delicious this is. The duck is really, really soft, uh, tender, and it's, yeah, it's, like you said, it just kind of falls off the bone. It's definitely worth trying. Mm. There is a little sweetness in the ravioli, which is, gives it a great kick with um, the duck. And um, this Parmesan cheese on the top, uh, on top is just bringing out great flavors of both of the dishes. And you have to put your utensils down so you can have a sip of this wonderful wine. Definitely recommend. This is a great place for also, um, you know, having a, just a romantic dinner with your spouse or your boyfriend. Um, so I definitely recommend that uh, Valentine's offer that he's making with the chocolate and, and wine. Can't go wrong. All right, so um, we are coming to the end of the show, which is uh, always very sad. But uh, Eric here has been so great to us uh, with uh, providing us information about the wine. 
And um, we're sad to say goodbye, but thank you so much for having us here. We really appreciate it. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and enjoy a glass of wine and <laughs> sit it. around. So cheers to that. Cheers. And uh, we'll see you next episode. Pearl's Fitness was provided by Snap Fitness, 24-7, fast, convenient, affordable. Located at 5442 River Road, North Kaiser, Oregon. Call them at 503-400-6344. Pearl's hair was done by Salon Argent. Contact them at 1930 Commercial Street, Southeast Salem, Oregon, 97302. Call them at 503-580-0633.